Hello friends and neighbors. Well, Reg and I have, um, had a bit of an adventure. We were last in the year 2012, and then after some unexpected time traveling, we suddenly found ourselves in the year 2015, and so... Wait, 2015? Oh, hang on. There we go. So Reg and I find ourselves having missed a few years of popular culture, and so, in an effort to sort of re-familiarize ourselves with the things that have happened in the last few years, we've done some research, and we've both found that there have been quite a few movie adaptations of books that have come out in recent years. Obviously, the vast majority of movies that come out are movie adaptations of books, but it seems like in the last few years there have been a lot of movie adaptations of books that we in particular enjoy. So in an effort to sort of reassess where we are with books versus movies reviews, I've decided to take a look at a handful of the movie adaptations that have come out in the last few years and just kind of look at them to see if they're worth doing a books versus movies review on. Now, understand the purpose of this list is not to figure out whether the book or movie is better. That's what the books versus movies reviews will be for. But this is just kind of a preliminary glance to see if the adaptation is good enough and interesting enough to merit a full books versus movies review. Now I'm not going to look at every single one of the movie adaptations of books that have come out in the last few years because that would take far too long, so I've narrowed it down to a list of 12, and all 12 of these are stories that I have some sort of interest in, whether they're books that I've read or movies that I have seen or I'm interested in seeing, or movie adaptations that cause a visceral hatred so great that it actually makes me nauseated. So I'm going to look at each of these 12 stories individually and figure out whether Reg and I will consider doing a books versus movies review on them. So without further ado, let's look at our 12 stories in the order in which they were released. Story number one, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is actually the only story on this list for which I have not read the book nor have I watched the movie, but I've heard enough about both and I've heard enough positive responses to both that I'm really, really interested both in reading the book, which I hear is phenomenal, and in watching the movie, which I hear is a really, really good adaptation of the book, and plus I'd kind of like to see Emma Watson play somebody other than Hermione Granger. So I can't say definitively whether or not I'll do this one since I haven't read the book or watched the movie yet, but chances are pretty good that I will. Number two, Cloud Atlas. David Mitchell writes the sort of non-traditional narratives that I really, really enjoy, but also the sort of non-traditional narratives that might not necessarily work outside of book form. Right now I'm about halfway through reading Cloud Atlas and I'm really, really enjoying it, and I've heard pretty mixed reviews of the movie. Some say it does a good job adapting the book and adapting the narrative, and some say it doesn't do so good, so I don't really have a good sense of whether or not this particular adaptation is worth really considering as a books versus movies review. So at this point, I'm giving this one an I don't know. <laughs> Number three, The Great Gatsby. When I saw previews for The Great Gatsby, I thought it looked like an interesting twist on the story, and I felt like the tone that they were trying to put forth really did echo what the book was trying to say. But my experiences reading the book from high school weren't great, I really didn't enjoy it, and when I tried to read it again recently, I couldn't really get past the first chapter for those same reasons. And I realized that the reasons why I didn't enjoy the book are the very reasons that make the book work the way that it does, but it's just a block that I really can't get past, and I know it's not a great reason for not doing a books versus movies review, but from what people have told me, the movie really isn't worth it either, so this is a probably not. Number four, Sea of Monsters. Wait, wait, Sea of, but, but they would, how are they get, what? What? How? What? Are they? What? That was my reaction when I heard that they were making a Sea of Monsters movie. In spite of a lot of the comments that I've gotten requesting that I do this Books vs. Movies review, I actually have done a comparison of the first book in Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series, The Lightning Thief, but I did it as a review of Shame because the movie didn't do a fantastic job of adapting the book. And one of the problems I had with the movie was that they were very obviously trying not to make it into the beginning of a series. They were basically eliminating any aspect of the book that suggested that there was a larger story that a series would start to tell. So I didn't think that they were going to go on with the series. I thought that the movie was just going to stand alone by itself because that's kind of what they were indicating. And then almost a decade later, they decided to make the second one. And I wasn't exactly sure how they were going to do it. And it seemed increasingly clear to me that they were just doing this 
for the sake of making money off of the franchise and not because they were trying to make an accurate adaptation or a good adaptation of the Percy Jackson story. They were just looking to make money. And it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, so I really had no interest in seeing Sea of Monsters. And again, from what I've heard, it really isn't worth my time anyway, so I'm not doing this one. Number five, The Book Thief. The Book Thief is one of my all-time favorite books. Long-time viewers of my videos will know this. It's at the very top of my ultimate recommendation list, the books that I would recommend to absolutely everybody. And the only reason why it's not my favorite book of all time is because Audrey Niffenegger wrote The Time Traveler's Wife. So when I heard that they were making a movie out of this book, I was both excited and a little bit nervous. Because the thing about The Book Thief is that so much of what makes it good is very, very dependent on it being specifically in book form, in language, and in the words. And I wasn't sure how they were going to translate that to a visual medium. But then I watched the movie and they actually did a really good job. The visuals complement the words very, very well. The casting is top notch and they told a really, really compelling story. There are a few things that I might have done a little bit differently had I made the movie, but I'm not a filmmaker, so take that for what it's worth. Still, it was a good adaptation and it's definitely worth considering as a books versus movies review and so I will be looking at that one. Number six, The Snow Queen versus Frozen. Now this one might seem a little bit odd because anyone who's read The Snow Queen and anyone who's seen Disney's Frozen, which is presumably based on The Snow Queen, knows that they don't have a great deal in common. The characters are almost entirely different, the story is entirely different. It seems like the only thing that they really have in common is the fact that they have a queen who connects with snow. But the more I looked at these two stories side by side, the more I realized that they do actually share more in common than it first appears that they do. And plus it is in the credits of Frozen that it is based on Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen. So. Though I'm not sure how I'm going to do it just yet, I will be doing the Snow Queen vs. Frozen. Number seven, The Fault in Our Stars. Yes. But you, you didn't even let Yes, me. yes. I'm doing The Fault in Our Stars. How can I not do The Fault in Our Stars? Yes, of course, yes. Number eight, The Giver. No. Okay, seriously, dude, you gotta let me finish the title before okay, you go. Okay, fine, I'll give a little bit more explanation about that one. So The Giver is another book on my ultimate recommendation list. It's another one of my favorite books. I think it is one of the best, if not the best, dystopian novel geared towards young people. And so when I heard that they were going to make it into a movie, I got excited. And then when I heard that they cast a 20-something-year-old actor to play the 11-year-old Jonas... I was less excited, and then I saw this promotional poster in the mall one day, and I was just done. Look, I get it. Dystopian fiction for young people has become something of a fad lately. It's very, very popular with The Hunger Games and the Divergent Trilogy and various other things. I understand the desire to take this dystopian fiction novel and turn it into a movie, but it really looked like they were trying to take what made this story distinctive, which was the fact that, at first glance, it doesn't seem like a dystopian world. It seems like a fairly idyllic setting. It's not like other dystopian novels. It stands apart from other dystopian novels. It doesn't use all of the tropes that many dystopian novels use. And it looked like they were trying to take that and just bland it away and turn it into just another dystopian young adult movie just for the sake of making money off of the name of Giver. And I didn't even want to see the movie. And I still don't want to see the movie. And people have told me that I shouldn't see the movie. So I'm not going to, and I'm not going to do this review. Number nine, The Hobbit. For some reason, this movie trilogy, and particularly the first movie in the trilogy, have really gotten panned by critics, but I honestly really enjoyed the first movie. I was a little bit unsure about them splitting The Hobbit into three movies. It felt like, again, kind of a fad, like what Harry Potter did with Deathly Hallows, and what Twilight did with Breaking Dawn, and what uh, Hunger Games trilogy is doing with Mockingjay. But when I saw the first movie, I felt like they did a really great job with that part of the story. The characters were great, they were telling a compelling story, and yes, there was a lot of backstory and a lot of what you might consider padding, but really The Hobbit, the book, is kind of a series of stories in that way. And this way we were getting a little bit more information on Middle Earth and a little bit more background, treating The Hobbit more as a prequel to The Lord of the Rings, more than the book did, because at that point, 
J.R.R. Tolkien didn't know he was going to write The Lord of the Rings. And I thought it was a really, really nice approach, and I felt like they did the first movie very, very well. The second movie was done less well. It was a little bit less character-driven, more plot-driven, and there were more things that I felt were like were just padding and not actually giving us more information about Middle-earth. But the third movie brought it to a nice conclusion, rounded out the story very, very nicely. I very much enjoyed watching it, and I felt like it brought the trilogy to a satisfying end. And Peter Jackson is no stranger to the second movie of trilogies being not that great. And so I felt like he did a great job adapting this story, and I am going to be looking at it as a full books versus movies review. Now, the last three stories actually have movies that have not yet been released, but they are books that I'm interested in, or they're series that I've already started watching, and so I do want to give my impressions on these as well. Starting with number 10, Paper Towns. The Fault in Our Stars really did open up John Green's books to a wider audience. Yes, they were pretty popular among the nerd fighters and among people who already knew who he was, but The Fault in Our Stars really brought John Green into the mainstream. I mean, for God's sake, I just saw his Instagram where he was posing with Snoop Dogg. The Fault in Our Stars movie did an excellent job adapting that book, and it opened up the door for his other books to be considered for movie adaptations. They'd kind of been considered before, but not really at all. So now there's a serious attempt to adapt his other stories into movies, starting with Paper Towns, which uses the same creative team as The Fault in Our Stars, which is very, very exciting. Uh, John Green is getting about the same level of input that it seems like he got on The Fault in Our Stars, which is also very exciting. He seems pretty excited about it. We're all excited about it. I think they're going to do a great job with it, and so I can't say anything definitively just yet because obviously the movie hasn't been released yet, but once it is, I have a feeling I'm going to be looking at this as a books versus movies review, too. Number 11, The Hunger Games Trilogy. Every time I see one of the Hunger Games movies, I am blown away by how good they are at adapting these books. I loved the Hunger Games books, all three of them. I thought that Suzanne Collins created a very compelling world, very compelling characters, a great story, and I felt like the first movie really did a great job of adapting it. I was even toying with the idea of doing a books versus movies review early just to compare those two movies, but I held off and I'm glad that I did because Catching Fire was even better. It was an even better adaptation. It was phenomenal at adapting that book. I was a little bit concerned about Mockingjay being split into two movies. I felt like maybe part one would have a little bit too much padding in order to make the movies last longer, but I watched it and I didn't feel like there was much padding there at all. I was continually engaged by the story, and by the time it got to the climax of the story, I didn't feel like I'd been sitting there for two hours watching this movie. So I felt like they did a really, really great job with that one as well. And unless they do something really drastically stupid with Mockingjay Part 2, there's no way I'm not going to look at this as a books versus movies review. And number 12, The Divergent series. I read Divergent on the recommendation of a number of people, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great world that Veronica Roth created, and I thought that the characters were good and the story was good. I really, really enjoyed reading it and getting lost in the world. I really didn't feel like it was a ripoff of Hunger Games. I felt like it was in the same genre that is so popular now, but I didn't feel like it was ripping anything off from that. I felt like that it was its own story and done very, very well. And when I watched the movie, my response was, eh, it was all right. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie, but I felt like they shied away from a lot of the things that made this particular story unique in an effort to make it look like the Hunger Games trilogy. So, the movie was alright, but I didn't feel like it was the absolute best adaptation they could have made, and I'm not sure how the other movies are going to pan out, and honestly, at this point, I'm halfway through Insurgent, and I'm kind of getting a little bit bored with this trilogy, too. Like, I felt like they established a great world in the first book, but is a lot of padding in the second book, and I'm honestly not sure how I'm going to feel about the story as a whole. So at this point, I really don't know which way I'm going to fall on this one. And that does it. Keep an eye out for some of those books versus movies reviews coming in the hopefully not too distant future. And until next time, I'm the Matt Hatter. Take care. And don't worry, I'm not going to be wearing this hat for every, every review I do. In fact, this is probably going to be the only one because it's really, really heavy and it's making my head sweat uncontrollably.